Muslims at present are exceptionalized in a number of ways. They're made to account for their presence. They're made to explain their identity, their faith, to account for themselves in relation to what are dominant values in society. Runnymede has a long interest in looking at Muslims living in Britain. We wrote a report called Islamophobia in 1997, very far ahead of the curve at the time. Tonight's event is to try and focus on different aspects of how the issue of Muslims has come to occupy such a position of significance. Don't do that nasty slip up, I'll smack you in the face. We can't just leave the space to those who we know are going to talk badly about it. We feel that Runnymede actually has an obligation to say something positive in this space. People say, why don't you stop talking about racism? It won't go away. And if we stop talking about the Muslim question, Muslims will not suffer any less on account of that. There's been a presence of Muslims for many, many years now in Britain, not just historically, but in terms of recent uh, migrations. The issue of Muslimness doesn't seem to be translated particularly well in media representations. You can be everything else and Muslim, but you will be remembered for being Muslim. You know, if people feel they're Muslim first, then that's an entirely legitimate identity category to mobilise around and ensure is recognised. Um, but that doesn't mean I've ceased to be a Yorkshireman living in Scotland, you know, a long-suffering Liverpool supporter and all the rest of it. If we want people to live in dignity, in peace, and in a way in which they feel they have a stake in society, then that involves recognising them, to some extent, on their terms. I think it's very hard for Muslims today not to fall under some kind of a spotlight. It's alleged that Muslims are seeking things which are unreasonable, haven't been sought before, are problematic. When in fact, when we break down what Muslims are seeking, it may not be the same, but it's relatively conventional. It does, of course, impact on the way that people live. It impacts on the way that people see people that get on the bus wearing a hijab or, you know, with a beard. From a government perspective, not just this government, the previous government as well, has tended to, from a policy frame, see Muslims in terms of a so-called prevent agenda, which really is about security and terrorism. It really does focus on other countries, on Pakistan, on Afghanistan, on Iraq, and on Saudi Arabia. And it turns our attention away from what's going on here in the UK. And to the extent that there is a concern about Muslims in the UK, it's how un-British they are. Muslim communities statistically feel that they are very British. There is a difference, though, I think, between what Muslims themselves think and what people think that Muslims think. There's a whole generation of young women who are having their sartorial choices questioned in ways which would seem unreasonable for other religious groups. The headscarf is now something which everybody can have an opinion on. One of the things I've done is to almost go out of my way to avoid engaging directly with hijab questions. The hijab seems to crop up time and time again when we're talking about the Muslim question in whatever context, even when women aren't being discussed. In terms of Muslim women's identities, we can't win. We're always being confronted with this assumption that we're living under some sort of false consciousness if we claim that we feel empowered through our faith. People are Muslim and British at the same time, and that shouldn't be confusing to people. There's no problem for them in affirming both a Muslim and a British identity. I think the problem is rather with those who think that there's a problem. In general, I think we're positive about where Muslims are going. There is a growing middle class, as we saw with Mo Farah at the Olympics. They can be seen as very sort of symbolic representatives of Britishness. We get second, third, fourth generations of these communities coming through who are very articulate, very positive and are contributing to British society in a whole range of different ways. It's hard though not to sort of focus on some of the negatives sometimes, but we hope the way that we're addressing and indeed the way that the researchers are addressing the Muslim question is one that frames the answer in a more open-ended and positive way.